morning. Welcome to Power to the Flower. I'm Kara, and today's Friday, so you've joined me for Kara's Friday Favorites for Successful Container Gardening. Stay tuned to the end of this video for the announcement of the winners of the Fall Wreath Giveaway. One of my favorite things is definitely a beautiful succulent centerpiece. And in this video, I'd like to give you some interesting succulent facts, and as well as show you how I designed and made this centerpiece. All right, let's get started. The first thing to think about with your design is the shape of your table. I have an oblong table, and so I knew I wanted a long and skinny container. Now here's an interesting fact about succulents that you might be surprised by. Succulents don't really love sitting in the hot, intense sun all day long in the summer. They can start to wilt because the summer is when most succulents are in their dormant period, so they're not taking up a lot of water, in which case having them in the shade in the summer is best. That said, check out these Aeonium Kiwis. Aren't they gorgeous with their red edging? Also, these Jolly Green Aeoniums that I'm about to show you, as well as the Dragon's Blood Sedum. These are all stressed plants, and that's why they get the red edging and red color. And so we definitely want to stress our plants a little bit. We just don't want them to burn. And this is why in our area, where it's still dry in the fall, is a great time for a succulent arrangement for outdoors. I garden in the USDA zone 9B here in Northern California, which means our average coldest temperature is around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And all of these succulents that I have here, and I'll have a list at the end of this video, are fine all the way down to 20 or 15 degrees. This one right here, the Sunburst Aeonium, is the only one that's gonna be a little bit dicey in this arrangement. I plan on leaving this arrangement out all winter and to see what happens. So in our climate, it's not really cold that we're worried about, it's more the rain. So it rains here, between November and March quite profusely at times. And so that's the thing that we need to think about in terms of care for this arrangement that will be sitting outdoors. Succulents don't like to sit in wet, boggy soil. So if in fact the rain becomes too much, we might need to move this arrangement to a protected area. In terms of the timeline between now and the rain, I would say watering once a week or once every two weeks is the plan. As for this container, you may notice those little brackets right there. This was actually a window basket made to be attached to a wall but I knew I would have spilling plants over the side and I just loved the way that the cocoa fiber looked a little bit like hay which I thought would be perfect for the fall so that all worked great. As for the design I knew I wanted to have two tall pieces to replace the idea of candles and this is an orange New Zealand iris which I really love because of the orange line down the middle of the foliage and then I underplanted them with these large faced aeonium undulata. I really love using aeonium in containers because they can face a lot of adversity and seem to do great. They can handle sun, they can handle shade, they handle water, they handle not so much water. They're very versatile plants. Below the undulata, I decided to have a variety of colored rosettes or rosette looking plants. The majority of these succulents were Echeveria, but then I also used a few Aeonium rosettes as well. The last piece I added were sedums. This one right here is called dragon's blood and it goes three to four inches high and about 10 inches wide. It's hardy in zones three through nine and can be a nice ground cover. You can see it's red color because of the nice stress it's under from the sun. And then this other one right here is called sedum sun sparkler dazzleberry. I love its evergreen purple gray dusty foliage as well as the huge florets that appear in summer at the end of each of the strands. It grows eight inches high and 18 inches wide. So I just use these sedums as the spiller and tucked them in as you can see and they will root in the soil. And with that, we are done. I think this worked perfectly and with a few pumpkins is suddenly a very fall and fresh centerpiece for my outdoor table. All right, and I'd like to announce the winners of the fall wreath giveaway and they are Cheryl Gerlich one and Rachel Gerlich. Definitely odds are in favor of those who were thankful for many people. I am certainly thankful for you and I am excited for you and your fall wreaths. Thanks so much for entering the contest and I definitely look forward to doing more contests in the future. Thanks for joining Power to the Flower and I look forward to creating something new with you in the next one. See ya!